So as you can see today, I'm rocking my alma mater, Brigham Young University, Idaho. Yes, there's an Idaho campus. And yes, we're pretty cool as well. And today's episode is going to tie back to this whole idea of the alma mater. Why am I rocking my hoodie? Because you're probably saying, Donald, you're in South Florida, man. It ain't cold. It's actually like about 75 degrees outside. And I know you're probably jealous because you're up north. But the point is, today I'm wearing this for a specific reason. Showmanship. Oh, man, you're going to love this episode. My guest today, listen, I ain't going to tell you all about it, but just know that this episode is going to help you to stand out. And Andy, ooh, she's going to help you. She's going to help you a lot. Check it out. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald C. Kelly. The Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode today, I have an amazing guest. Her name is Andy Druitt, and you're going to love her. She has, she is, uh, She's doing some amazing stuff when it comes to storytelling. Andy, right now, she's a Senior Vice President of Business Development at AMP Agency. And AMP Agency has been around doing some fantastic things for a while. We have a link down in the show notes so you can get access to Andy and check her out on social media so you can see some of the cool things that she's doing. But in this conversation today, when we were chatting, one of the things she mentioned was a story which tied back to Alma Mater's. And I Again, I won't tell you. You have to listen to the episode to hear it. But I decided to rock this to talk about to, um, to to help you know do some uh, some some visual explanation and to give some excitement for this whole episode. Now I'm going to take this hoodie off in a second here because it is too hot here for this um, in South Florida. But as you dive in, get a chance to listen to what Andy's talking about storytelling and how she utilized this in her agency and how you can use it, utilize this in your business development process to actually engage your prospects even more so, keep them with you and actually close more deals. If this is your first time listening to our podcast or watching one of our videos, this is easy peasy. Go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe and we'll notify you every time we have a new episode as well. So I won't take up much more time. Let's go ahead and get a chance to meet Andy and learn about some of this cool storytelling stuff. Let's do it. Can I get the sweater off? Get some water. It's hot. It's hot in here. Welcome to the show, Andy. Thank you so much, Donald. It's great to be here. I'm really looking forward to this um, because the, the notion of using stories has been around for a long time when it comes towards the, you know using it in sales and just in society and in life. But it's doing it properly at the right time and then executing it in the right way. And I think from our previous conversation, you do this flawlessly. So I, I really want to learn from you on that. Um, before we dive into this a little bit, uh, I bragged about you a little bit in a teaser there, but tell us a little bit more about what you do. There's a lot of little yeah. bit there. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. So I oversee business development and marketing for a full service advertising agency, AMP agency. Um, we're a multi service, full, you know, full service and do everything soup to nuts for our clients. So I've been at the agency for about eight years now. Um, and in my role, my responsibility is identifying new clients for the agency. Um, in our world, you know, we're selling professional services or creative talent, really. Um, so we really have to win the hearts of our prospective clients. And that's where storytelling is huge. Pitching is my world. Um, so going from those first initial conversations to the big show at the end where we're pitching big ideas, um, we're trying to show them that we can we can be the right partner. So that's that's really what I do. So we're going to capitalize and continue going on a path about selling in an agency. You've done other selling before where you primarily did a lot through agency work. Yes, yeah, so I started, I've, I've kind of always been in advertising and marketing my whole career. I started at another agency in account management, um, where a different type of selling in, in a way where you're maintaining the relationship with current clients and you're finding ways to upsell and you're trying to nurture and evolve the relationship. So I would say I started my career, you know, learning those soft skills of selling. Um, I also did a brief stint of, um, I was working for a regional membership association for professionals in marketing and technology where I was selling memberships and sponsorships. So that's where I got more of my cold calling and, <laughs> um, you know, pr proposal management and all those skills. And then I came to AMP and I almost honed in on everything I had built up over the years. And I've been doing that ever since. 
why do you feel in the agency world that like you know what makes sales you kind of alluded to it a little bit in your in the beginning part there but why is selling an agency so um so different than many other um, disciplines per se yeah yeah i know i i alluded to it when i said you know the type of professional services yeah. we're, we're selling so i always say I, i'm in the business of selling people's talent right so yeah. you know me as the more head of sales and representing the agency of course i want to be able to tell the story of the agency but they're not going to be working with me day to day. So I need my team to shine. And that that's really what makes it a little bit different than selling a product that, that doesn't change, but you might change your story based on who you're selling to. Um, but for us, it's beyond selling our services and selling, you know, our, our talent, it's, it's selling personalities, making sure, you know, this is a good match. And, um, you know, it's, a, it's a structure that we can build a, a positive relationship off of. Mm, I love this. Um, well, I, I think there's a, um, it, it's very, it, it's, it's an intangible in a lot of ways, right. Um, from the, at the very beginning of it until you actually create something. But, mm -hmm. um, and like you said, you're selling the, the, the creatives, um, the overall, the team. So there's so much in this. And, and, uh, and this is why, again, I, I think this idea is going to be great when it comes to stories. Um, talk to me about, you mentioned you're in a, the game of pitching. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, you know, a lot of times salespeople get hung up on pitching or they want to pitch, but there's a right time to pitch. There is a, mm -hmm. a right place and a right time about that. I found, however, that people sometimes will go too deep on pitching early on. There's a strategy you explained to me that sometimes people mess up with, especially when it comes to words, this, you know, when you, when you do need to pitch they go to the idea of the toxic, toxic vomiting, uh, tactic vomiting, excuse me, yes. not toxic. that'd be disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> the tactic vomiting. Talk to me about that and why people make those mistakes, especially when it comes to agency. And then we're going to go into the, um, you know, the storytelling, how you got involved in that. Yeah, sure. So especially in my world, and, and I would say this can apply to selling products as well. You know, yes. you, you definitely, you, you feel that, um, need to come up with custom thinking and, and ideas and solutions for that prospective client. And a lot of times, you know, our teams have amazing ideas. We have several of them that it's almost, you know, but it's the delivery of those ideas that can totally kill it. So mm. and kill it negatively. Um, so when I say I, I've heard the we've gotten feedback that we delivered tactic vomit, it's because we just kept spoon feeding them idea, 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 and none of it strung together um, and none of it was delivered through the lens of a story. So quite frankly, they walk away and they probably forgot 99.9% .9 of it. <laughs> so <laughs> that that's why the, the to me, the art of a pitch is. You know, there, I mean, there's so many elements to it, but a, a very important element to it is the delivery of those ideas in the form of a story or a better way of putting it, a thread where they all connect together. So your goal is they walk away and they remember what you just, you know, were throwing at them for an hour, two hours. <laughs> <laughs> How did uh, storytelling help with this? Like, um, and, and how did you stumble upon stories to be able to help you become a better seller. And, and I know you have a framework, which I want to get to as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and without giving away that, you know, I, I think it really starts with understanding um, what the client is looking for. So, you know, you, in your earlier question, you said a, a lot of sales professionals want to go right to the pitch. Right. Um, and it's fun. Um, it's funny when I have sales professionals selling me something, you know, CRM, the, uh, software as a service, whatever it may be, I find in that first call, they whip out that presentation and I'm, <laughs> they've lost me, you know? So what I find is you, it, in the same way, and, and I'm by no means a writer or an author, but you don't just start writing the story. You do a lot of research before and that, you know, it's those initial conversations that that's where you're trying to dig and figure out what is the story you're eventually going to be 
building. So I think, you know, through learning that and just the art of the research and getting to know your client, that's where I, along with my team, have realized the importance of storytelling and really how you get there. Well, how? Everyone's been sitting on the edge of the seat now. They're like, <laughs> Andy, Donald, you've been telling us about this for a minute now. What is that framework? How do I use it? Um, use story in sales. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I the I've I've really broken it down into three core elements and each of these elements could have their own separate hour long podcast probably, right? But um the, <laughs> Is that the a way to continue I, then, Andy? <laughs> it might have to be. You might have to invite me back. Um but my my three core elements is number one, make them make the make the client the main character. And we can we can, you know, break that down a bit. Number two is take them on a journey. And then the third one, believe it or not, is a little bit of showmanship. <laughs> so, um, you know, to very quickly break those down and, and just sort of define them a bit, making them the main the character, that's what I already started to allude to, you know, do not whip out that presentation that has nothing about them and is just about your product and, and your elevator pitch, you know, do the research so you understand what they're looking for, how they're, you know, you can find something that's going to resonate with them and how you can build a story around them being the hero. The second one, when I say take them on a journey, you know, every story that you've heard that, that you always remember has something that we always call a hook. So for me, it's not just about coming up with that hook, but it's also figuring out a way. So you bring, you take that hook from beginning all the way to the end and create that thread so they walk away remembering it. And then the third one, and you know, this used to be maybe extra credit, but now to me is table stakes is is showmanship. And that doesn't need to be anything fancy, but you know, you want to figure out those other ways to bring your personality and bring things that are going to be memorable to your story. So we've figured out ways to do that, especially being virtual in a lot of our pitches these days. But we found that, you know, it's made clients remember who we are and, and say, oh, that was the agency that, that did that. So those are sort of my three, my three core elements. I know what my favorite is already, and I'm not going to say it until we get to what, but let's, let's go deeper into <laughs> make them the main character, like make them the main, I, I, we know this, but how do I do this in a storytelling format um, mm -hmm. effectively? Yeah. So along with that uh, um, beginning research that you want to do and any, any touch points you have along the sales process, you know, and I, I know sometimes it can be limited depending on um, what environment you're in. For us in the agency world, sometimes we are pitching a client where it's all run by the company's procurement team and they put a wall against you and between you and the client, you know, so you kind of have to do a little outside research, a little bit of weird online stalking, but you do as much as you can to be able to build a profile around who this person is and how we can help solve their problems, really. Um, and then, you know, so when we are building a, a pitch and a story around them, that's really the plot, if you will, is how we're going to solve your day-to-day -day challenges and roll up our sleeves and, and be your partner. So, you know, I, I once got some fantastic advice from a pitch uh, search consultant, um, Mercer Island. They're fantastic. Um, one thing that they had told us to do um, as a way to make the client the main character from the beginning was um, they said, why don't you build out a, a mutual agenda for the meeting with the client in the room? And what they meant by that was, you know, you know, you you already have your presentation you've been working on for weeks, right? You already have your agenda set. If if anything, you have a slide in your presentation that has the agenda. But before even putting that on the screen, when you're doing your introductions, you're asking everyone to go around the room, say their names and roles, you ask them, you know, what do they want to hear about today? And you can even whiteboard it. So if you did your homework and you planned your story accordingly what they want to get out of the day and what they want to talk about should line up perfectly with your slide number one, which is your agenda that in their heads, they just, they just planned out with you and you know them so well that you you're ahead of it and you're going to talk about exactly what they want to talk about that day. So then from the first, you know, Can five you give me an example of, of that real quick. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, 
Um, trying to think of a, a good example off the top of my head. Um, so let, let's just say, you know, you're, you've learned about this client, they're, um, they're a CPG brand, they're in a very crowded, you know, let's say snack category, they are up against some of the largest brands in, in the world, they don't have that type of money. So, um, you know, you, you have come, you are ready to come to the table with solutions that are going to help them outsmart versus outspend all their competition, right? So the story that you've built is coming up with, you know, insights around how we can do that. You know, we've done all the competitive research and then we're coming up with unique solutions in how they can win in the market. So, you know, in when you're in that meeting and you're excited to present all, you know, your whole story and all your ideas, before you get going, you say, you know, hey, I'd love to hear what you want to make sure we touch on in this meeting today. And again, if, if you if you planned it right, then that CMO or, or that marketing director is going to say, you know, I'm really excited to hear about, you know, what you've seen in, in that our competitors are doing. And the next one might say, I want to see, you know, what creative solutions that we're, are we not thinking of? You know, so it almost kind of it lines up that you you know what they're looking to hear. And that's how you that's how you plan the story. Love it. OK. Sorry to keep going, and you just got me pulled in there. So <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, no, that that was basically it. That's that's my that's my making them the main character. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, I yes. didn't ramble too much, and that resonates. No, it, it was great. So it, it's all it, it's wrapped around them. It's what they want to focus on, um, and you did the research already. So you kind of prep, and you're you're you, you know how to start positioning your stories or your examples. Mm -hmm. Is that? Um, do I, w with this understanding, is is this then knowing that they're the main th main focus, um, or these three main points that you you describe, are those overall the the framework of effective story, or is that again like the first part that I need to understand before I can tell a story? Am I making sense? It, that? Yeah, more more the latter. That's more okay. the the preparation in how you can make them the center of attention. Great. So now that I got that part down, I'm taking them mm -hmm. on our journey. Um, yeah. That element in effective storytelling. How do I do that? And maybe you could give an example of that as well. I like sure. role playing, so you can make. We're putting okay. this on the spot here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love. We didn't I like practice it. any of this, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're gonna roll a bit. Um, so when I say take them on a journey and figure out the hook, you know, I I I always tell everyone, and this this almost sounds quite literally elementary, but mm -hmm. when you learn how to write an essay when you were young, you know, my, our teachers taught us what they called the sandwich or the hamburger method, if you will, yeah. right? You had the, the buns that were the, the opening and closer and then the meat of it and, and all your toppings and how it all flows together. This is kind of like level seven of, of that, right? So, you know, for us, when we're, we, we have our strategy and research teams coming, coming up with all these really interesting insights to drive what our big I idea is, right? And what we want to do is have a perfect build up to this big unveil of what the idea is. And then it's all about, okay, this is our idea. This is how you're, we're going to solve all your problems. This is how you're going to have the biggest brand in the world, right? Now here's how it all comes to life. So that big idea is the hook. And you you want to have in the same way that hamburger method, right? You want to have the perfect opener and then start to build to it. But then you don't want to have too much build because now all of a sudden they're, they're just waiting around. They're like, get to it already, <laughs> you know? So um, it's it's really about making sure you have the right storytelling elements to take them there, get them to that big idea and say, oh, I get it, I get how you got there. Okay, I'm interested, show me more, show me how you take that hook all the way to the end. So, you know, everything is centralized around this one idea, but no different than, you know, a fairy tale or anything where there's a lead up to a, a big, you know, climax of the plot and then come down to the end that that's really how your your pitch should go as well so let's let's give an example go back to our previous one again um yeah. the cmo um consumer good product or, or whatnot mm -hmm. how would we utilize that journey principle that you just shared and help to create a hook because yeah. again we're trying to differentiate from all of our competitors in this sure. in this space 
Yeah. So, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use a real life example. I won't say who the brand is. And this was oh, this shoot. was a, a quite this is quite some time ago, but it's it's yeah. a good you know kind of classic example. So um, again, so think snack brand. Think of the snack aisle. You know. Um, and all the Frito-Lays that they're competing with. So for this client, we did a ton of research around how consumers might eat this very specific snack. We did focus groups, we did secondary research, we looked at competitors, everything. And one thing that we learned was this specific snack was enjoyed very much with a sandwich. So we actually went beyond our scope of, um, of what we would be doing, being advertising. And we actually came up with the idea of having them um, talk to their retail partners and saying, we don't want to be in the snack aisle. We want to be in the, de- in the deli section. <laughs> and that was essentially our, our big idea. So when you're storytelling that, you don't want that to be on slide two, you know, and in the first five minutes, you want to show all the research you did to back that up. But at the same time, you want to balance that with not throwing too much of the homework we did and all the nerdy stuff we did in the background, right? So, you know, storytelling, the even the insights part of it and making that almost little mini stories and part of the hook to build up to and end of the day, what we realize, what you need to do is put your snack in the deli section. You know, you, you want to have that perfect balance of not too much, too much insights and facts and figures, um, but enough to make it a story and make them so excited that that's going to be the way they win. So um, I'm going to ask a question. You don't have to tell me if this is a client, um, but I did see this in my grocery store. And they do have it here. And as soon as you said it, I just started thinking, what's next to it? But there's a brand, Dirty Potato Chips, um, at Publix. That product is right <laughs> there next to the deli. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe we'll talk after the call. But I saw that and I was like, it makes so much sense. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. anyways. <laughs> That's actually not the, they're, they're a copycat. We, we could talk oh, about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but it, 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 but the the point here though the hook I got the hook early on in this process, mm-hmm. and you're getting my attention with the research with it, so you're coming out the gate hot, um, mm-hmm. making me the main focus of what I want to cover, and then now you, you're you're giving me this taking me on this journey, um, and helping me to see the path so to speak with that hook, and yeah. I'm anticipating the why behind this now. You know why did Frodo need to throw the ring in Mordor? Like give me some more you know context. How did he get there? Um, mm-hmm. How did you get there? It, yeah. You know, is, is that the, the path? Am I on the right path there? No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, ab- absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the path to get to that big unveil of, you know, be in the deli, in the deli section, right? If you think about it, that, that lead up and that journey is, it's not just, you know, the, we don't want to just throw a, a chart on, on a slide and say, look at X percentage of consumers said this, you know, that might, that might be the visual you show, but you might tell a mini story in that moment. And and our strategist might say, you know, we did focus groups and we had this very specific individual that told me about, you know, how they love watching football and, you know, and like almost have these little mini stories that, that would resonate with the client and make them so excited that consumers love their product already. And, you know, making them kind of remember the anecdotal parts of a journey that led up to the big unveil, right? And then Mm -hmm. from there, they they just want to know how how do we do it? Let's let's go, right? So that's where that's where you can run into tactic vomit and you have to be very careful. (laughs) But you know, we we had you can have so many ideas of how that can come to life and how you can get everyone to know that this snack is the perfect complement to your roast beef sandwich right and yeah. in in our world that's what the tv spot could look like what a you know amazing tiktok activation could look like and the challenge is showing them a tv spot then showing them it on tiktok then showing them it on you know print then showing them what it looks like in a, just a, a digital ad and all of a sudden it's like idea 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 Mm -hmm. And that's where you can all of a sudden lose them. So 
for us, you know, we, we try and come up with something that it makes it almost feel like everything is thread together. And maybe you say, you know, this is this whole idea around the deli, deli section, that's going to take your business, you know, in a model for the next whatever, 10 years. But let's just show it to you through the eyes of just a back to school campaign if you will. Yeah. And then so every idea we have is all strung through whatever concept we came up with with back to school. So it might just be one example, but at least, you know, it's something they can walk away and remember, oh, they did TikTok around back to school. And they're not going to forget all the bazillion ideas that we came up with because everything kind of thread together um, in a story. Yeah. Love it. All right. So this is my favorite. Now I can tell you. It is this, uh, the showmanship. Yeah. Um, define that. Talk to us about what that is. And then let's weave it all together um, mm -hmm. and, and, and align this for them. Okay. So this is when I say, you know, I have a lot of people when, when I tell them I work for an advertising agency. Um, and if they don't work in advertising or kind of really far from that world, they always immediately bring up Mad Men. If you have <laughs> and they say, oh, this is like Mad Men. And, you know, these days now, if you're in advertising, you're probably laughing right now because advertising is so digital and data focused and in the way that, you know, all these companies can, can creep you online. It's such a different world. We're not at the office, you know, drinking, <laughs> drinking scotch at, at 12, <laughs> like smoking cigarettes, <laughs> like, no, it's nothing like Mad Men. However, I will say the showmanship part of pitching and what Don Draper did in Mad Men is as is as close as it gets and that is I do relate to a lot of those very famous episodes where the way he presented the idea and the showmanship around it you know the, the big Kodak episode like that that is showmanship now these days you have all these added layers of what advertising is and it is a lot more you know scientific now and it can and less sexy, if you will, sometimes. And plus, <laughs> a lot of times we're selling over video and not in person. So you're losing the schmoozing in the elevator part of the meeting, you know, so showmanship can be hard. And it also can very accidentally get cheesy, which you never want. Mm. So really, when you think about showmanship, it's that extra layer to make sure they're going to remember not just your agency, but the specific team members that are going to be working with them day to day. And you want to show, you know, we're, we're not just smart and we're not just going to solve all your business challenges, but we're fun. <laughs> we're fun to work with. That's a big part of advertising. So, you yeah. know, we were pitching the, the example I know you like, um, we were pitching a higher ed company and I knew we were going to have a few pre meetings with them again, all virtual, before the big kahuna presentation. And I said, I know this is gonna be really competitive. And you know, our first meeting with them, we're not all gonna get a chance to talk because they're gonna be briefing us on the assignment. What's something really small we can do? From day one that they're gonna remember AMP agency. And we decided <laughs> because we're gonna be on video, I made everyone, everyone who was who listened to me, wear their alma mater um, college sweatshirts on the call. <laughs> so we all showed up, you know, very all serious and on, on video, their cameras turned on and we all had, you know, Boston College, Michigan State, we were all wearing our sweatshirts and they immediately started crack like laughing because they noticed immediately because none of us were dressed up like usually would, you know, at least from the waist up for a virtual call. <laughs> so, um, you know, it was great. And, and then the next call, they they remembered, they brought it up. And now that, that's one thing from day, from that first touch point, you know a little bit of just subtle showmanship that I was, I was very proud of. And what I love about this is like what you're saying, it's not cheesy and it's not over the top. It mm -hmm. takes thinking and, uh, and obviously it, it's going to be, it's hyper relevant to that particular prospect. And by doing that for me, I would say these people actually talk about, I mean, I know you're going to go back and you're going to deliberate and think about some ideas to present to us, but the mm -hmm. fact that you did that kind of shows on an outward side that these people, they were together and they contemplated and they thought about us and our brand and how we could stand out. And I don't know, all around just made you feel like you put stuff in and get, put a little bit more extra effort and mm -hmm. a little bit more fun to work with. And, you know, tongue in cheek, I would have fun with that. You know what I mean? 
I love yeah. That. I uh, well, that. see, my my three elements work together because what you just said is yeah. making you the main character. So it all it yes. all works together. <laughs> <laughs> So this is how you tell effective stories, y'all. It's like you, you make them the main character. You took them on this journey and you you did a great showmanship. And I think for sales professionals, we can do that in, um, I, I think, go back to what you said. I think a lot of people, I met with, um, I can think I can say this out loud. When I spoke with LinkedIn and I was doing, um, you know, working one of their content creator coaches that coaches on content. One of the things he asked was, you know, why do you feel a lot of people don't post on LinkedIn? And I was like, um, I don't know. They just don't want to, they don't want to sound stupid. And he was like, yeah, it's really from what they've seen. The data is just that because of that P word, professional network. So mm. then people automatically is like, I don't want to post something. It's not professional. They'll go on Instagram and post stuff or on Facebook and post stuff. But once you put professional, it's like, is this professional? Am I, do I need to post this? Can I post this? Do I have the authority to post this? You know, that all that come wraps up in it. And I think it's the same idea when you talk about this idea of showmanship, like everyone comes with the default approach. Like, you know, I think sometimes they, you know, in, in Mad Men, they all look like penguins, right? With their black suits or dark suits sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, tie. And I think in the, in the world of business, sometimes we find that where we need to show up as default or feel. But if you want to stand out, you got to have a little bit of panaz, you know, a little bit of, I say the right word? Like, yeah, it's a little bit of showmanship yeah. to it that just makes it, Oomph, whether that's like a video you send over or, or like in this case, a sweater, or it's like, um, you know, sending a little gift in the mail or, or whatnot, something that helps to tell that story. And it has to be relevant. If you guys just had on, you know, random, like, you know, hoodies, it wouldn't make any sense, but the hoodies or sweaters with the college makes so much more sense. And that's what makes the relevancy. I could go on exactly. for days. I'm happy. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> um, I'm on a fence. I know I need to tell stories. I think I tell stories. Well, let's back up. I think I tell stories. Okay. I'm listening to this podcast episode today, but I want to do better at it. How do I go about testing if my stories are good? How can I evaluate if I'm better at telling stories or how can I practice telling better stories? Yeah. I have a mouthful there, but. No, no. The, to me, the best practice in that, you know, and I, I sometimes do this with, with my husband once in a while when I'm, when I'm prepping for a meeting is you know, tell the story, present, present to someone who's completely, you know, unrelated to, <laughs> to the, the sale itself. And yeah. it, not just asking for feedback, but specifically asking, what did you remember? Mm. That is, that is the key thing. And that when, when practicing, I think that is the, the bottom line piece of feedback that you want to get, because if their answer is not, what you were selling and what your main hook was, then you didn't, you didn't tell a story, you know? Mm. Um, and, and then the other piece I think is, is kind of reaching outside of your own bubble and your own industry and looking at how other, how storytelling is done, not just in other industries, but even, I mean, even in, in literature, if you were to look at what, what a perfect story arc of, you know, the best books and novels out there you can absolutely compare your your pitch deck to that. Um, so I think, and that that's how we we do a lot of our kind of frameworking of a story. We we start with post it notes, and we literally write down every single main point we want to make, every single idea we have, and just throw them all up on the board. And then you kind of start to organize them into the the framework of, of your story. Sometimes things don't even make the cut because it's just so outlandish, and there's no way to fit it in. Um, but that that's a great way to not just practice, but also, you know, figure out how, how to map everything out. Absolutely love this. Listen, Andy, we could go on for days, as you said, and a lot of great insights here. <laughs> but if folks are um, really excited to learn a little bit more about you, about your agency and about just like your framework, how did it go about connecting with you? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm glad you brought up LinkedIn. I like LinkedIn. <laughs> you can find, <laughs> find me there, Andy Jewett. Um, and then our, our website, um, ambagency.com, when you fill out any inquiry, it goes straight to my inbox. So <laughs> if you're looking to just say <laughs> hi, um, or, you know, talk about advertising, those are the two, two best channels to do it. I'd say Instagram, but that's just, you're going to find photos of my three-year-old and my dog, but you can find <laughs> me there too. <laughs> 
But we'll put those in our show notes so folks can get access to you. Andy, thank you for taking the time to come on the show today. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Donald. It's been fun. So that was Andy. If you got a chance to meet her, yes, I didn't take off the sweater. I kept it going. Uh, you got a chance to meet Andy. Go ahead and let her know you found her here on the Sales Evangelist podcast. Tell her, I mean, rock your alma mater and tie back to that story. I mean, that was pretty cool what they did. Um, go ahead and rock your alma mater. Tell her about that in the show notes. I mean, in on LinkedIn. Speaking about show notes, we have our sponsors' information there as well. So go ahead and connect with them. Tell them that you are uh, that you're from Donald's community and you want to take advantage of the deals that they're giving you because we can, we communicated with them. We did some showmanship and some hustle with them to make sure we give you some offers that can benefit you. So take advantage of them. As always, we want you to build a stronger sales pipeline and convert a high percentage of that. We want you to be able to perform to the best of your ability. We want you to raise your level of thinking. I want you to take advantage of LinkedIn. So take advantage of our LinkedIn program. Go to the salesevangelist.com slash LinkedIn to check it out and apply. We only take a certain amount of people in a cohort. Again, I want you to raise the level of thinking, go out and do big things. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Andy. Mm-hmm.